Ready to make your first video but not sure where to start? Well, by the end of this video, I'm going to share with you the exact process I personally use to generate over a million plus views right here on this platform and how you can follow this right now to start making your first video. My name is Raheem Madison. Let's get into the content. Okay, so step number one is to come up with a good idea. And let me go ahead and define what I mean specifically when I say good idea. So a good idea to me is speaking to the intent of the person that I want to attract. So that means that do people care about it? Is it getting searches every single month? And does it pertain to my target audience? Because there's two different types of content creators. There's the content creator who only cares about vanity metrics like likes, uh, subscribers, and views. But then there's the other content creator that cares a lot more about generating leads and sales for their business, right? So you have to understand which type of content creator you are specifically. So I want to show you real quickly how you can use YouTube as a free tool to find out what people care about. So right here, you can see I have this search box, right? And I have it pulled up on an incognito browser. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use, for example, keto. So I'm going to type keto in there and then I'm going to just see what pops up. Up. So everything you see right here that's popping up are the things that people care about anytime you type in the words keto. Okay. Now what I like to do, right, because most of the channels that I have are education channels and the channels that I help people with are within that space, right? So what I let them know is I say, okay, well, how to because they're gonna be doing some type of education stuff. So now when I type in how to, you can see how to keto diet for beginners, how to keto and intermittent fasting, how to keto diet for weight loss, and all of these different questions that people would have around that specific topic. So maybe your topic isn't keto, maybe it's gardening, maybe it's uh, life insurance, maybe trying to build your life insurance business. There's gonna be certain things that you have to put out to attract those type of customers that are interested in those things right? So it's important that you know who it is that you're trying to attract and how it is that you're going to help them. And that's important when you're trying to come up with a good idea. Okay. So let's try another one just so you can see somewhat of what I'm talking about. So if I type how to affiliate marketing, let's just go with that one real quick. Okay. So when I type in how to affiliate marketing, this is somebody who wants to do affiliate marketing on Amazon. This person wants to do it on Pinterest. This person wants to do it on Instagram and so on and so on. And this could literally go all all day long and I've done in-depth videos where I literally show you every keyword strategy that you can use to find multiple ideas so you can definitely check that out I'll link it down below in the description okay so step number two is metadata optimization so what is the metadata the metadata is the title of your video the description for your video and then also the keyword that you decided to go with from what I showed you in step number one okay so this tool that we're looking at is actually called morning fame and morning fame is what I use to optimize my metadata and I'm gonna take you through my entire process all right all right so here we go so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just keep the theme that we was rolling with and uh, step number one where I talked about keto we're just gonna keep rolling with that so I'm gonna say how to do keto for okay so let's just roll with that how to do keto for weight loss so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that and then as you can see it gives me the grade and then as you can see, I can see all of the other competitors. But what we're going to is just straight into optimization. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit choose for step number four, hit continue to step number four. All right, so first thing it does is it gives me the title because they understand that I want to use my keyword in my title. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna go here, paste it in the description like that. Then I'm gonna go down here to these tags. So I don't wanna use all of these tags. They usually like just put them in there for you based off of what everybody else is doing, but I don't tend to use that. So I go ahead and I hit remove with low scores. And then I take every one of them away except for the one that I'm trying to go for. All right, so now I need to go down here and I need to hit save. All right, it just saved all my changes. All right, so this is where we're gonna start at first. We're gonna start with the tags themselves. So first I'm gonna go to suggestions. And I'm going to choose the keywords that are the most close to the one that I want to go for. So in this case, how to do keto diet for weight loss. That has a 60%. Uh, this right here, how to take keto diet for weight loss. We can go with that. That's still somewhat close. Uh, how to start keto for weight loss. That's I think that's relevant. And then how to increase ketones. I wouldn't say that one. Uh, let's keep going. Let's see what else we can do. Uh, how to do keto diet for beginners. I think that can kind of fall along the lines because most people are doing keto to lose weight. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that one. 
and then let's go to the next uh, next section. So you got suggestions and then you got use tags. So these are all of the use tags by all of the other creators. So I'm gonna hit use tags and then we got weight loss. Uh, that's not so you know relevant. Keto diet for beginners, we can roll with that one. Let's see what else. Uh, keto weight loss, that's 80. We can roll with that one. Uh, how to do keto, how to lose weight on keto. We can roll with that one. And then keto diet plan for weight loss. Uh, not, not, not so much. If I was talking directly about that, I might use that as a keyword, but I'm not talking directly about that. All right. So I think I got enough keywords for now. We'll just roll with that. Now, the next part of this process is we got to highlight these tags so we can pick up all the other words that are within the keyword. And let me sh explain to you what I'm talking about. So right now, if I hit highlight tags, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And then it's showing me all the most important words that are within the keywords that I just chose. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my AI prompts for content creators that I created. And I'm going to go to my YouTube description generator prompt that I created. So now I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go over here to chat GPT. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this inside of chat GPT like this. And let me go ahead and move me out of the way so you can see what this looks like. So this is it. Write a YouTube description that starts by asking a thought provoking question for a video title this is where i'm gonna enter in the video title or the keyword and then down here the ad related keywords that's where i'm gonna put these particular uh words right here okay so the keyword is how to do keto for weight loss come back over here paste my keyword right here in this section and then I'm gonna go ahead and grab those additional words. So let's go ahead and grab these real quick and we're gonna hit copy. And then we're gonna come back over here under the ad related keywords right here. And we're gonna paste those in. Now I'm gonna put parentheses around that and then I'm gonna put parentheses around the first word. All right, so now all I gotta do is just hit this and then watch it generate me a description that's gonna be optimized. All right, so boom, my description is now done. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy, come back over here like this, paste my description. Description. Now notice all of the words pretty much disappear except for the word beginners. So all I would have to do if I really wanted that in, I would come in here and find the best place for me to put the word beginners in. Let me just type it in there just so you can see what happens. So if I type beginners like this, boom, you see how it says excellent now. So I'm gonna just take it away for now, but you wanna make sure it says excellent down there. And so at that point, you know, you highly optimize, all right? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my title and I'm gonna put it under, cause I, I kind of think of it like code. So in code, there's a beginning of code and then there's the end of code, right? It has two things that pretty much tell you what each thing is. So within that, I want my main description and then under that, I want my highly targeted hashtag. So down here, you can see, let me go ahead and hit enter twice. And then if I go down here, associated hashtags, if I hit show, you can see keto, weight loss. Let's see what else is somewhat relevant. Keto diet. And then I can just roll with those, right? So you see how I'm able to pretty much take care of everything I need within the description here. So now the next thing I can do, let me go ahead and move me back down because I know I'm kind of all over the place here. Now, right here, it says get AI title ideas. Now I can either go and use my specific prompt that helps, or I could just use morning fame itself and just hit get AI title ideas based on the keyword that I have right here. So you can see right here from flab to fab how to do keto for weight loss now me specifically i might switch that around and have how to do keto for weight loss because i understand that youtube ranks videos based off of relevancy so you want to make sure you have your keyword in the front and then i will move this right here to the back right and then you can go through all of these different ones they have here and decide which one is going to work best for you now another way you could do it is you can actually come up here to my ai prompts and you can go to my keyword first titles and if i copy all of this right here go ahead and do that come over to chat gpt paste this in here like this and then insert the main keyword here now i'm gonna go back go ahead and copy the main keyword come back to chat gpt go ahead and paste the keyword right there and then i'm gonna hit enter now what it's gonna do it is gonna give me titles that start with the keyword first and then put it in parentheses with something intriguing all right so check it out so how to do keto for weight loss 10 surprising tips that could be one. Another one could be unlock your body's fat burning potential. How to do keto for weight loss, the ultimate beginner's guide, or how to do keto for weight loss, transform your health today, right? It's so many different ways you could do this. And let's say you don't like those. You could just literally say, hey, give me 10 more. And then boom, it's going to give you 10 more just like that. 
how to do keto weight loss, shocking myths debunked, and so on and so on. Okay, so step number four is thumbnail creation. And I'm gonna show you how to go from no thumbnail to a completed thumbnail, and on top of that, the software I use to be able to do it. So let's get to it. All right, so we inside of my thumbnail creator, and so I'm gonna show you exactly how to structure your thumbnails. Now, if at any point you see value in the exact tool that I use to create my thumbnails, go ahead and click the first link down below in the description. That will allow you to get instant access to it, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So once you come into this software, you wanna go ahead and click right here where it says thumbnail creator, and then you wanna come right here where it says start with no video. Look at all these different templates. You could literally just come in here and change it up how you want it, add different graphics and so on and so on right this right here is going to save you a bunch of time all right but for this video i'm gonna go ahead and build it from scratch the exact same one that had the 10.5 percent click through rate i'm gonna build that from scratch all right so let's go ahead and get started so what i'll do is i will hit right here where it says start from scratch boom now we start from scratch so now i'm gonna go ahead and minimize this a little bit all right so let's go ahead and get started so i'm gonna go ahead and go to gradient because i kind of like the gradient flow all right now from here i'm gonna go ahead and turn this black on the side so we can kind of match how the other one look and then i'm gonna go to the blue just like that all right it's somewhat looking like it already and then the next step is usually where i add my picture right so just to show you how you can remove the background from any picture i use remove.bg.com all right well not com but remove.bg then i come over here let's say for instance i got a specific picture that i use i'll go to my desktop let me actually go to my desktop real quick and try to look for my thumbnail poses right so i got like this folder that got all the thumbnail poses in there already right all these different ones so that's i recommend you to you to do something similar to that all right all right so i'm gonna take this picture right here and i'm gonna go ahead and remove the background from it watch how quickly it does it boom and then i will hit download and if you if you use the top one it's gonna be a smaller picture i recommend just paying like nine bucks to get 10 credits and then you could just literally get the, the HD one, right? That way, when you actually put it in the software, it's a high quality picture, right? Then I would download this and then I would come over here. The good thing is I already got everything in here so we could save a little bit of time. All right, so now what I would wanna do is I would scroll down and just add the picture that I want, right? You can see we got a bunch in here and then I would click on this, all right, boom, there we go right there. And then I will make it big, roughly, you know, make it look somewhat like the one that we was just uh, looking at. And then to make the picture it look better because right now it look a little ashy right so i'm gonna go ahead and adjust the contrast and all of that good stuff let's go to image filters right here i like to put my contrast to kind of match my skin you know whichever one looks best for you but i like to go with 0.20 and then the saturation for me that works best i like to go with 0.05 so to add the text what you want to do is you want to click right here i like to go with alpha heading and then what i'll do is i'll click on alpha heading and then i'll turn that white right because i know um, for the colors that I use for most of my thumbnails, I use white and I use that green. All right, so let me go ahead and put this up here. And then what I'll do from there is I wanna get the little, the little box that I use. So basic shapes. So the one I like to use is right here. I click this and then what I have to do is I have to kind of expand it I'll expand it over here like this. And then let's go ahead and stretch this out, bring this in like this. And then what we have to do is we have to push it back, right? So I'll go ahead and press this right here. Boom, there it is right there. And then before, I should, I should have probably turned that black first. All right, so I'm gonna turn this black. Boom, there we go right there. Bam. All right, so now we need to turn that green because I remember I had like it works or this works or something like that, right? So I wanna go ahead and just write that out real quick. This works. And then I'm gonna turn that green, right? So where the color at? All right, so there we go right there. And we're gonna turn that green. Boom, it's starting to look like it already, right? So now we're gonna make this a little bigger. Okay, boom. Okay, it's somewhat looking like it, right? It's not like 100% perfect. Let me make this a little bigger okay there we go and then what we need to do is we need to get the results picture that we had right so i'll go ahead and go back in here and kind of scroll for it a little bit okay there it is right there boom there's the results picture right here and what we need to do is we need to push this back as well so in order to do that we go to the same thing right here send it backwards a few times all right there it is right there and then what i did to kind of keep the viewers focus is to put a red circle around the results right so to get a red circle all i gotta do is i got to come over here and as you can see you got a bunch of different things you got the arrow the badges the basic shapes 
you got everything you need. So what I like to do is I go into the arrows and then you see this little circle right here. The one I like to use is this one down here because it, it, it kind of gets the job done. Now, when it comes to this circle, I like to make it a little big and then drag the circle over here a little bit. All right, so let's stretch this out and let's go ahead and make it red so it'll start to stand out. All right, so boom, we made it red, we good to go. So now we're gonna have to kind of adjust the way it looks so you know it could look a little better. Then from here, we can go ahead and stretch this out a little bit more and then, okay, it's somewhat looking like, like, like how we want it. All right, we'll stretch this up a little bit like this, bring this in a little bit more. Then what I did um, to make it look thicker, I actually just duplicated it, right? So I went ahead and hit that button right there and then I mashed it up to make it look a little thicker. One more time, I did about three of them. And this is essentially what I did to create that thumbnail. Now, obviously I did a little bit you know, bigger of a text Right, I did something like this and then I expanded this a little bit more. Now something else I can do um, is I can put a, a, a like a, a shadow on it. And I think I actually did that to make it kind of pop a little bit, right? Cause this look a little bland. So what I did is I clicked on the shadow over here and I like my shadow to be like super dark. Now, if the shadow is popping out too much, what I do is I take the offset down to about six and then I make this offset down to about five, right? And there are some times where I'll, I'll change the color for the outset um, and I'll make it like the exact same color as this if I have the white playing into it too, right? Because I don't wanna have too much of one color. So as far as the framework, I like to stay between one to three words on the thumbnail. There are thumbnails that I've created that have like four and five words, but sometimes that kinda, it, it's kinda like one of those things where I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, ah, this is, this is just too many words, right? And so one thing you wanna, a little tip I got for you is when you create your thumbnails, you don't want it the exact same as the title that's a little boring, right? You want to put something intriguing so that it kind of forces them to look at the title and they just want to click. It's that whole entire package, your title, your thumbnail, and also your hook. And one of the things that a lot of people don't talk about, when somebody watches your last video, like the video that you did prior to the one that you're going to release now, what experience did they actually get from the video that they watched the last time? And that's going to affect your click-through rate as well because they might have had a bad experience with the last video and may not even want to watch the next video. Just a little tip I wanted to share with you real quick. So from here, what we want to do is we want to go to template name and we want to name it as the keyword that we're trying to rank for, right? And so I'll paste the keyword for this video. It was how to promote affiliate links with free traffic. So that's exactly what I have in here, right? And then you can either save it as a JPEG or you can save and continue. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring you to a confirmation screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and click it. I'm gonna go ahead and hit overwrite template, hit save template again. Boom, there's the confirmation screen right there. And then this is pretty much what my thumbnail would look like. And then from here, I like to save it as a PNG. And then I'll just go right here hit download and I just save it right here in my download and in my thumbnail folder and then I'm good to go. Okay, so step number five is structuring your video. Now this falls right in line with the scripting of your video. Now some people, they gonna script every single word, but I'm gonna just let you know that does not work for me. It works for some people. Me personally, I use bullet points, right? So I list them out on a piece of paper and then what I do is I focus a lot on the first 30 seconds of my video. Why? because the first 30 seconds of your video is extremely important is ultimately going to determine if somebody continues to watch your video which is why i have on the screen the average view duration for one of my videos and if youtube actually has an analytic inside of your analytics for it that tells you how important it is okay now if you look right here you can see this particular video has an average view duration of three minutes and 17 seconds and that is an average percentage view of 48.6 percent right so that's almost 50 percent average percentage view so based on that data I can ultimately say that this video had a good structure so if we look at the data here you look at this graph you can see within the first 30 seconds 82 percent of people are still watching which is very very powerful which can ultimately help this video so if we keep going yes it continues to go down but that's what tends to happen as a person continues to watch the video so focus on your first 30 seconds which is your hook I want you to write that out completely that's the only thing that I write down down to the T and then also your body and I highly recommend something else that you write down is the end screen
screen. So there's a lot of people who use end screens. And when it comes to end screens, you want to treat it just like your hook because you're trying to get people to go and watch another video. So you got to really intrigue them. You got to make sure that it stands out and it just really makes them want to click. Okay. So step number five is to record the video. And notice we did all of those other things before we got to this particular point here, because it's important for us to meet the intent of the viewer. That's very, very important because if they click on a video and it's not what you said it was or what your title and thumbnail showed it was, they're going to immediately click away. So we have to prepare the video in this specific way. Okay. So now the next thing I want to share with you some filming tips, because these are going to be helpful for how you come across on camera. So number one, and this is the most important one. Okay. You want to make sure that your eyes are looking directly into the camera, like into the ball of the camera, because what happens is we get this urge to want to look to see how we look on the camera versus actually looking into the camera. Let me give you an example. So right now I'm looking directly into the ball of the camera, right? But what newbies do is they'll look at themselves, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm looking at myself on my computer to see, okay, how is my hair? How is my eyebrows? How, how do I look on the camera? Versus if I look back up at the camera, now that allows me to build a deeper connection with the person on the other side of the camera. Very, very key for video marketing. All right. All right. Now, another thing is making sure that your eyes are eye level. So granted, you're going to be looking into the camera, but you want to make sure they're eye level versus if I was down here, now it looks like I'm looking up at the camera or if I'm like too high, now it looks like I'm looking down at the camera. Right. So notice the difference. And then another thing is the distance between my head and how high the roof is within the camera frame. So let's imagine that I was sitting down like this, right? So I'm gonna scooch down. So now there's a whole bunch of space above my head and I'm below the eye level versus if I come right back here, now I'm eye level again and everything is good to go. Now, another thing I'll share with you, and this is on more on the recording side, which is some people just hit record and record their entire video all in one shot and in this one big clip. I used to do the same thing, but back in the day, when I did that, I realized it took me a long time to edit because now I got to get rid of all of the stuff that wasn't usable and all of the mess ups. So what I start doing is I start recording my, my hook as its own clip, certain body clips as their own clip, and then also the outro as its own clip because it saved me way much, way much more time when it came to editing my YouTube videos. Okay, so step number six is to edit your videos. Now, when it comes to editing your videos, I'm gonna try to make this very, very simple for you. So there's a couple different things. Number one, you wanna focus on organization, okay? So let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. So this is my video editor, it's called Descript, and keep in mind, everything that I've been talking about, there's a link for it down below in the description. So if I go up here to media, and then I go ahead and I click on add file, and then I go to the particular folder. Okay, so when I click on this, you're gonna see I named the folders for my video files for whatever keyword I decide to go for, which is what we were talking about in step one and step two. Okay. So now you can see this is clip number one that I recorded. Remember I said I record in clips and then clip number two. And then this right here is clip number three. And then everything else that's in relation to the video is also uh, within that folder. Right? So that's what I mean when I'm talking about organization. Now, besides the organization, when we get into the actual editing of the video, these are the most important important things. Number one, you want to go ahead and cut the fluff immediately. And what do I mean by that? Let me actually show you. So let me get this out of the way and I'm going to make this a whole lot bigger. So notice we have a waveform right here, right? And you can see there's nothing going on right here, right? I want to show you how simple it is for you to actually get rid of that. All I got to do is take this and slide back and that quickly is gone, right? Now, I want to go throughout the entire video and I want to cut out any silence, like, you know, in between me talking, any long pauses or anything like that. You want to go ahead and cut all of those out. And what you're doing with that is you're increasing the pace of your video. Because if you ever watched a video that just seemed like, man, this video is just really dry. It's just taking a long time. That's because they didn't cut out certain parts of their video that were the awkward long pauses and so on and so on, right? So you want to cut all of those out first. That's step number one. Now, step number two, after you've cut out all the pauses, you want to go back and what you want to do is you now want to identify what are the possible zoom ins and the possible titles and any possible B rolls. So basically, I'll show you what I mean. So let's say, for instance, I get right here to where it says, is the 
is the right, right? Let's just put it anywhere. Now, let's say, for instance, I realize I say something like, so as you can see right here, that's language for me to zoom in. So as you can see right here, or you see right here, it's, it's me pointing to something, trying to get their attention to focus on something. So that's giving me the signal to say, okay, I need to go ahead and zoom in on that particular point, right? So as you can see right here, you see this time, I will go ahead and I will write that time down at the time it started and then also at the time that it ends. So that way I know, okay, that's one of my zoom points or that's one of my B-roll points or that's one of my title points. So it's very, very important for you to write those down. So then when you go back and you do your thing it makes it smoother now this is a step that most people don't do and this is very very important this part is where you go back after you've done with everything and you go ahead and you watch your video back as if you were the viewer that's gonna be watching it and you got to be real with yourself you got to actually watch it and at those points that you feel like man this this kind of boring they probably gonna feel bored with it as well right so you got to be willing to go back and see what can you do to make it better make it more intriguing right this is very, very important for you to do. I promise you it is. And step number seven is to upload your YouTube video. And this is exactly how you do it. So what you want to do is you want to come right up here to where it says create. Go ahead and click on that. Then you want to click where it says upload videos. And then right here, you want to go ahead and click on this. And once you click on this, what you want to do, and I'm just going to click any random video real quick. So let me go to just this clip right here. And if I want to click it, I would double click on this file and then it would take me through the step step-by-step -step process which YouTube shows you as you're going through where everything goes and then once you do that you hit upload and you go live.